Winter of 2019 isn't even over and North America has been suffering ticketing anxiety since the start. With over 10 K-pop tours that have come to North America, the number of shows that have come here has drastically changed from the number of shows that used to come in the past. Now when a K-pop artist announces a world tour, this no longer means an Asia tour, but also always includes North America now. I'm no expert as to why this is, but I have some ideas. To those who are new to K-pop, this might seem like it's not a rarity. The past year has been an explosion and the numbers have been steadily increasing in the past few years. So many people will wonder why this seems like a big deal. Why make an entire video about why we're lucky enough to have shows? But understanding why these things are happening is important to get an understanding as to if they will continue to happen. Let's start with the entire concept of Hallyu. Hallyu is the export of Korean culture often focused on entertainment and also including K-beauty. Korean companies have been exporting goods like technology and cars for decades, but when they realized their entertainment was also commodity, soon all things Hallyu started to spread like a wave. Hallyu spread to Asian countries with the help of proximity, but all locations near and far were impacted by the accessibility through the internet. A boom in the internet and faster communication made connections and the ability to consume even easier. For a while, the export of K-pop events was mainly focused in Asia, which more openly accepted things like K-pop because of the shared similar cultures. Places like China and Japan, which largely influenced the shape of K-pop's idol culture, were logical places for the export. Groups would release songs in the local language and guest on shows, all the while an idea of K-pop artists in the U.S. was a kind of unthought of concept. After all, a few groups and solos had tried to make U.S. debuts, but ultimately ended up being unsuccessful. Sure, there were the occasional shows, but to say they were few and far between was an understatement. Then KCON came to the picture. KCON brought multiple artists here, reducing the risk. If multiple groups come, more people would be packed into a venue. A successful event gains more attention. Slowly, KCON became larger and more days and locations were added. Groups saw that it was possible to come here and tour and people would come. Companies saw this too. One important thing to know about music is that much of the money earned is from endorsements and tours, not the actual album sales. So being able to send a group on a tour would bring in money, which is why some groups tour so much. Still, why would a K-pop group travel all the way to North America for events when they could hold massive events much closer in countries like China? Well, enter Thad. It came to a head in 2016. China tried to slow the import of Hallyu in the country in favor of their own national artists. Obviously, there are more political reasons related to the tensions between Korea, U.S., and China, and a buttload of missiles and support, but that can be an entire video on its own. How it impacted K-pop is that China closed up. Korean artists could no longer promote on Chinese television, going so far as blurring out Korean artists when they couldn't be cut completely and entire productions were scrapped. There were no more concerts over a certain size and that made concerts in general outside of Hong Kong and Macau less practical and profitable. So what was K-pop going to do when exporting to one of the major countries it focused exports on up to the present was locking up? Well, growing success in the U.S. led K-pop to turn their focuses there. Shows were selling, venues were getting larger, profit was to be made, and it didn't hurt to gain more attention in the largest music industry in the world.
U.S. became an easy and willing target. One easy benefit that promoting in America also did was that it reduced the need to do extra production. U.S. audiences, while thrilled with the occasional English version of a song, wanted the Korean tracks. That meant not having to release country-specific albums like Japanese or Chinese albums or anything really special. Artists could continue to produce in Korean and U.S. audiences would gobble it up. Now, I'm no expert, but it seems like these factors all lead to why we are currently experiencing an influx of K-pop tours this year. And as long as they remain profitable, which they seem to be, we will continue this way for the foreseeable future. Are you excited and lucky enough to be seeing one of your favorite groups come here or expect them to come in the near future? Let me know about what group that is in the comments down below and I will see you guys next time. Bye.